race is coming up now at 10. Coming up, our trip inside an aircraft station right here in Nebraska. One of the most important when it comes to national security. Plus, a local athlete heading to Portugal. How she's not letting a disability stop her from trying to be the best in the world. First, race organizers and volunteers gearing up for the 45th Lincoln Marathon. But this one will have a different feel than normal. It's our top story on 10 11 hour at 10. Good evening. I'm Bill Shamertz. And I'm Kelsey Passel. The Lincoln Marathon is back this weekend, and it's expected to bring in thousands of runners. But the number of participants is about half of what the marathon usually sees. 10 11 hour Samantha Burton has been looking into this and has more. Samantha. I spoke with organizers of the Lincoln Marathon who tell me the lower numbers aren't just effects of the pandemic. Organizers say international runners are having a hard time making it to Nebraska for the race as well. This year, the Lincoln Marathon expects around 4,800 runners across both the marathon and half marathon. But it's nearly half of what they'd usually see. Years before that, I think we're closer to 10,000. And the, the race has been as large as uh, 14,000, and that would have been probably in that 2015, 2016 range. But numbers aren't only down for reasons you'd expect. Organizers say it's due to competition with other races nearby within the same time frame. Folks would travel to Lincoln from Des Moines or Kansas City or Denver because there weren't a lot of other options during that weekend or even during that month. Now it seems like there's a race every, um, you know, every Saturday and every Sunday. And international runners who may not have as many options for races are struggling to make it to the capital city. They're just very backed up in terms of acquiring their visas, which is something that is necessary um, to come and compete. And the Lincoln Marathon was expecting a couple dozen runners from Kenya and Ethiopia. Now, they tell 1011 they might see seven total. Travel restrictions um, and just the sheer weight of that process has been kind of uh, tying people up. Even with smaller participation numbers, the Lincoln Marathon is ready to have its first marathon with no restrictions in two years. We've worked really hard this year to make it feel like a normal event, right? Not a, not a COVID event, a normal running event. The 45th annual Lincoln Marathon is on Sunday. More details can be found at lincolnmarathon.org. Samantha, thank you. It is no secret Marathon Day means plenty of road closures around town. Here's a look at the route map that we found on the Lincoln Marathon website. The biggest road closures are going to be parts of 16th, 10th, Sheridan, uh, Normal, down here along South 48th Street. The closing times vary with routes along the half marathon shut down until 11 a.m. This is the red markers right here. And then these routes along the full marathon route, the blue markers, those will be shut down until 2 p.m. Well, let's check in on weather tonight. We saw record lows this morning. Ken, are things looking a little warmer for early Wednesday? No, Kelsey, they're looking a lot warmer for early on <laughs> Wednesday. In fact, the temperature right now in Lincoln is warmer than our afternoon high yesterday. We did end up making it to, to the lower 70s this afternoon, even after that cold start. Three minutes after the hour of 10, we're cleared to partly cloudy in Lincoln. And check these numbers out. Still 62 here at the 1011 studio, 60 at the airport. Unfortunately, the fly in the ointment once again is that south-southeast wind at 17, still gusting to 29 miles per hour. Temperatures across the state in most locations, it's still low to mid-60s. There are some 50s on the map, but it's still 62 in Grand Island, 60 in Hastings and Kearney, 65 in Lexington, 60 in Broken Bow, and 68 right now in North Platte. Still a lot of locations with a south-southeast wind sustained at 12 to 22 miles per hour, and still a few locations where the wind is gusting between 20 and nearly 30 miles per hour. It'll stay breezy through the overnight. We are looking at variable cloudiness. We'll call this partly to at times mostly cloudy, and that's what we'll see overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning, partly to mostly cloudy skies. No moisture expected overnight tonight into your early morning commute, and temperatures will be much milder to start the day tomorrow. Instead of low 20s to low 30s, we're talking about low 40s to low 50s to begin the day. Folks have a shot at 80 degrees or better tomorrow afternoon. We'll have complete forecast details in just a few minutes.
South 70th Street is back open tonight after being closed several hours because of a deadly crash. It happened around 1.30 this afternoon. Multiple agencies responded to the crash just south of 70th and Pine Lake Road. The Lancaster County Sheriff's Office says two cars traveling in opposite directions collided head-on. The driver of one of the vehicles has non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the other died at the hospital. Investigators are still looking into what led up to the crash, but say that driver was not wearing their seatbelt. To Sarpy County tonight, a former Omaha area soccer coach is facing up to 50 years behind bars. Kyle Merrick pled no contest to a charge of attempted child enticement after making his first court appearance nearly a year ago. Merrick was a coach with Gretna Elite Academy and an assistant coach for Papillion La Vista Schools. He's accused of sending inappropriate messages on social media to two children he was coaching. Sentencing in this case is scheduled for July 12th. Tracking the latest developments in the gubernatorial race tonight, several state senators are now trying to help the women accusing Charles Herbster of groping them. These are... There are five female Republicans in the Nebraska legislature, and these four and Senator Julie Slama. Slama accused Republican candidate for governor, Charles Herbster, of reaching under her skirt during a political event in Omaha in 2019. Seven other unnamed women have also come forward with similar stories. These four senators say they are launching a legal defense fund offering any accusers or witnesses a place to get legal counsel and resources. We're trying to send a message the only way we know how, that if you're scared, if you're getting bullied, if you're getting letters from lawyers, come to us. We will help you. Today, Slama's attorney fired back at recent ads put out by Herbster's campaign, which calls Slama and Governor Ricketts co-conspirators in a plan to stop him from getting elected. Slama's lawyer says Herbster is trying to bully sexual assault victims and that he'll, quote, answer for it in court. Herbster denies all the accusations against him. In national headlines, according to the CDC, the coronavirus has infected more than half of the population of the United States. The White House announcing today Vice President Kamala Harris has also tested positive. Vice President Harris is the latest high-ranking official to test positive for the virus. Her office saying today that she is not experiencing any symptoms. The White House saying it has been several days since her last close contact with President Biden. Here in Lincoln, case numbers are still low, but they are starting to tick back up. The daily average is up to 19 per day. That is the highest it's been since early March, but still much, much lower than the peak in January when it was more than 700 per day. The city of Lincoln and Lancaster County are working together to allocate ARPA money to areas in need. Today, announcements focused on the local workforce, transportation resources, and public safety. The American Rescue Plan has been instrumental in helping us meet the immediate critical needs of our community and lift up our neighbors through direct relief funding. At the same time, this historic legislation helps invest in our future. And these are just the latest updates and only a portion of the total pot. $2.5 million has been allocated to replace rural culverts. Half a million dollars has been given to rural fire districts to upgrade radio systems. Three million has been given to expand commercial air services at the Lincoln Airport. And another $1.5 million is being invested in the build out of a new American Job Center. So far, the city has allocated about $45 million in American Rescue Plan funds to help various services and nonprofits. A federal program that changes the lives of Nebraska families every year could end in a matter of months. The Maternal Infant Early Childhood Home Visiting Program, or MICV, helps parents who struggle with things like poverty or substance abuse from when they first get pregnant until the child turns six. It is set to expire in September unless Congress votes to reauthorize it. Social workers say the program is crucial for the well-being of Nebraska's children. I feel that if, if this were to expire and, and me and my fellow co-workers are, are not able to be in the home, there might be an increase of that, um, at least neglect, not necessarily abuse, because people don't know where to turn. 
The program also helps military families who have at least one parent serving. A Lincoln teenager is about to embark on the trip of a lifetime, heading across the globe to represent the U.S. in wheelchair tennis. All while setting an example for others with physical disabilities that it's never too late to start excelling at something you love. New at 10, Ten Eleven Now's Ellis Wiltsey joins us in the studio with this story, Ellis. 18-year-old Lily Launchlager was recently named to the World Cup junior team. She's played the sport for a while, but she's only been competing in tournaments for about a year. She will represent the U.S. for 10 days in Portugal for an international tournament. This is one of Lily Launchlager's last tennis lessons in Lincoln before she heads to Portugal to represent the USA. It's an international tournament for um, wheelchair tennis players across the country. And so I think in the juniors division, there will be eight countries there. Um, so I will get to play a lot of kids from a lot of different countries. Not always super cool to meet everyone and just kind of get to know people, um, but also be competitive. In order to qualify for wheelchair competition, players must have permanent mobility-related physical disabilities. So while she can walk, a rare disease means she can actually play better this way. I have clipal trinani, which affects me from the waist down. It basically means that um, my veins keep growing and they don't stop and they don't have valves. And so, like, my circulation is really, really bad in my, in my um, vascular and my lymphatic system. And one leg's bigger than the other, and so my muscles are a little weaker. This is Lily's first time competing for the USA, but not coach Kevin Himes' first trip. He's been involved with wheelchair tennis for years. Starting with a partnership with Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital and now coaching on the national team. I feel really fortunate and she's one of a kind and um, we've had a lot of really good athletes come through here, able-bodied and in wheelchair. Um, and so to be there with somebody from Lincoln that I, I've trained, yeah, it's quite an honor. Right now, Lily is ranked eighth in the world in her division. As one of four on the team, she tells me she's not only excited about playing, but using the experience to come out of her shell a little more. Kevin has been doing the wheelchair lessons for the six years that I've been doing tennis, and so just like I've built that relationship with him, and he has always just like pushed me, but not pushed me too hard that I burn out. Lily tells me after she graduates from Lincoln East in a few weeks, she will be heading to the University of Arizona, where she will continue playing tennis and pursuing a degree in education in hopes of becoming a coach in the future. Ellis, thank you. So fun to see someone doing what they love. I know, and I don't want any part of that forehand. <laughs> that was, she was pretty incredible. Thank you, Ellis. Still ahead, 1011 takes a special ride with the Air Force. It's the ultimate mobile communication hub during a national crisis. Plus, it's midweek baseball as the Huskers look to take down a former Big 12 foe at Hawks Field. Highlights later in sports. Even after today's 73 in the capital city, overall, it's been a rather cool month of April. In fact, if the month ended today, we'd be in the top 20 coolest Aprils. And as far as precipitation goes, we're still stuck at 41 hundredths of an inch. Again, if the month of April ended today, that would be the seventh driest April ever. But the month doesn't end today, and we've got rain chances before the week is out. Forecast details coming up. Stay with us.